Well, good morning and welcome to the weekly pet pairing. I haven't filmed a video in about a week, which basically means I completely forgot how to talk to the camera. So this is going to be an awkward one. I'm taking my glow last from Auric to apply underneath my eyes because they need it so fucking hard. What can I say in my defense? Other than it is, first of all, it is January and I now consistently see that the month of January is definitely one that I experience a huge dip. It's pretty normal to be a bit down in January, but I now see consistently that January is not a great month for me physically or mentally. I always feel extremely tired, um, not necessarily demotivated, like work is no problem, I can go to work, um, getting my butt there is not an issue at all. Getting out of bed though, that is a struggle every single day. Anyway, I think this week in particular had more to do with the fact that uh, I think I was a little bit hormonal. I'm taking my First Aid Beauty Concealer now, by the way. Oh no, I forgot to zoom you in. I had promised to zoom you in when we do makeup, sorry. I feel like this is enough. I have kind of decided that even though I have not quite finished the Clarins con Concealer yet, I would like to go back to using this one as well because, you know, it's still a really nice concealer and I would like to um, kind of compare the two formulas while I still have enough of both in order to really be able to tell which one I like better and I've really been enjoying this one um, I think compared to the one from Clarins it has less coverage but it feels a little bit more fresh and hydrating uh, underneath my eyes which is you know something that I'm looking for more in a concealer I don't necessarily need that much coverage I don't have super bad under eye, you know, discoloration or blue under eyes or whatever. So for me, that's not really a problem area that I need to address. Um, I think for me, it's more important that my under eyes look fresh and plump. The combination of this product together with the Auric one really does miracles. Um, which brings me to, I hope you knew or somebody informed you unfortunately that wasn't me, I'm sorry, that Auric had their um, birthday sale and 15% off. I'm a little afraid that might be over by now, but if you knew about the sale, I really hope that you got your hands on Glowlust if you were eyeing it, because that was probably the most amount of um, discount you're going to get on their website. With Black Friday, they did the lamest thing and they had 50% off shipping. What kind of a sale is that? I'm going to take my double wear nude foundation because it is the most hydrating foundation that I can think of from my collection right now. So I was saying this week I was a little bit hormonal and um, you know it's the time of the month and I usually feel really knocked out the first two days or so. So yesterday and today are particularly, that was very self-explanatory. <laughs> So anyway, that's a little bit the reason why I haven't been filming. It's not that I haven't wanted to, it's just that I would wake up in the morning and just not have the energy for it. Okay, I'm going to apply my foundation now and I wanted to show you something that I discovered this week. So I have this Sonia G brush. It is the Sculpt4 brush. Beautiful brush, very interesting uh, shape, a little bit asymmetrical um, with like tapered um, natural gold hair. And the thing with this brush is I didn't, I never really um, had a clue what exactly I'm supposed to use it for ever since I bought it because I tried it a couple of ways. It works really well with cream bronzer, cream blush, um, powder bronzer, powder blush, you know, it works with all of these things, but I tend to like it a bit more for bronzer than I do for blush because I feel like the shape is a little bit too awkward for a blush. And the brush itself is also quite dense and quite stiff so you can't really apply like finishing powder with it because it's just too uh, then it's just too thick of an application for a powder I like my powders to be very diffusely applied and then the other day I think um, I was remembering something that Bia told me that she uses these types of brushes for foundation and at first I was like quite skeptical thinking really like a fan brush for foundation but you know what I've been using this for foundation the last week and I love it it's really soft, it really feathers the foundation, it doesn't make it look streaky or anything. As you can see, it applied really, really well. I know that uh, these types of bristles are not meant to be used with cream and liquid products and it's probably not great for the brush that I'm doing that. But you know what? It was an expensive brush and I'd rather use it for something than just admire it sitting in my collection. So, I wasn't using it much 
and I felt like such an expensive brush shouldn't be used every now and then to apply my bronzer with, I decided to put it in my rotation as a foundation brush and I've really been enjoying it, like I said. Sorry if I'm repeating myself. Like I said, I haven't spoken to the camera in a whole week and you know what? She and I have fallen out of love. Anyway, I'm going to take my Dior face and body powder, no powder, like I said. Since I finished my hourglass powder, I'm kind of rotating through all of my powders pretty equally. And for different purposes, I guess. Because this powder is one that is very natural on the skin. It gives your skin a little bit of a glow. And I don't know about you, but the hormonal times of the month usually make my skin look very dry and dehydrated. So I think I'm taking my look in a warmer direction today. I was kind of inspired by the combination of my um, dress and my nail polish, so that kind of gives away the look, but okay. Uh, so I'm going to take this bronzer from MAC. This is the Delphic Studio Sculpt Defining Powder. It's a beautiful warm toned bronzer, one of my favorites. Now that I have only like six bronzers left in my collection, I'm really rotating very regularly through everything and getting a lot of use out of everything and I'm really enjoying the fact that you know, I use products often enough to probably see a lot of progress. But I've also fallen down the slippery slope of thinking that I need another bronzer. And I've really been eyeing one of those uh, bronzer duos from Victoria Beckham. I am extremely curious to try her brand. One, because Porsche seems like a girl with good taste. Second of all, and I think most importantly, because I'm very intrigued, by the sustainable aspect of her packaging design. She is, I think, more made of like a light metal or something like that. It is refillable in case you ever finish a bronzer. I don't know if that ever happens to anyone, never happened. Well, no, that's a, that's a lie. I did finish a bronzer once. My Makeup Geek bronzer in the shade... I don't remember the name. Was it Tony or something else? Might have been Tony. I finished that bronzer. Not to the very last drops, but enough to say that I made some real good use out of it. You must be tired of seeing me use this blush, but unfortunately on days when I want to feel perked up and optimistic about life, I will take my Desert Orchid blush because it just makes me feel good, okay? So, <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. One of the reasons you see me use my blushes from Pat McGrath so often is because they last really, really well, excuse you, underneath the mask. I think of all the blushes that I have in my collection, cream or powder, these are the ones that are mostly there at the very end of the day. And as much as I love my cream products and a lot of them do stay on really well underneath the mask considering, you know, the circumstances, uh, most of them will fade a bit more throughout the day compared to something like this. And out of the powder blushes that I have in my collection, I think the ones from Pet have something to their formula that makes them feel extremely uh, long lasting. And I'm going to highlight now using my highlighter uh, Skin Fetish Trio and I will do what I usually do, which is basically go through all the shades and create somewhat of a peach highlighter for my face. And speaking of highlighter, I uh, have a shocking revelation for you. Let me grab it. So I don't know, for those of you who've been around my channel for a while, you know that I am a huge fan of the Aurora Glow Kit and I was obsessed with the shades Eclipse and Lyra. I have huge dents, I don't know whether you can tell. I have huge dents in both of those and I was on the verge of purchasing a backup of this because I couldn't imagine my life without Eclipse and Lyra in it. Imagine my surprise when the other day I put on the shade Eclipse, like the more orangey one, and I didn't like it. I could see like little specks of glitter on my face and I have grown out of those types of formulas so much that now it actually bothers me when I see it. Um, I still like the undertone, I still think the, the highlighters have a very nice sheen to them, but I've fallen out of love with the formula of these. I think um, they might actually go in a couple of months without even being finished, because I just, I'm just not into that formula anymore. There you go. So I got the option for a free trial of Apple TV since like a few weeks ago. And I've been like binging TV shows that are only available there because I only have three months of that free trial and I do not plan on extending it past the three months. But before I proceed rambling about my Apple TV uh, TV series adventures, let me tell you what we're going to do for the look today. So the uh, look today is going to be actually quite a few shades from the Celestial 
Odyssey palette. I'm going to start with my two mattes here, the caramel and then the deep brown. And what I want to do next is I want to apply this beautiful gorgeous green shade Citrine Envy on the outer half of my lid. Then I want to apply this beautiful orange called Corrupt Copper on the inner part of my lid. And then we're going to jump into the second palette for this look to do something fun with that. But I just wanted to give you a heads up of what's happening now. So I don't have to lift the palette every time and we can continue chatting about Apple TV shows. So one of the reasons I wanted to get um, Apple TV is because one of my colleagues highly recommended watching Ted Lasso. And I was... I had heard a lot about the show. It's not a super popular show in Europe. I know that in the US it's a little bit more popular. But I had heard a lot about it and I knew that uh, Jason Sudeikis was getting a lot of um, award nominations for his role and because he, I think he's the producer of the show as well, I don't know, he's involved in the actual making of the show as well. And what do you know, I watched it together with Hubs and we both fell absolutely head over heels with this TV show. If you have the option to watch that lasso, I highly recommend it. It's like nothing that you've seen recently on TV. It has like, I don't know, it has all the elements that make a show really good. It's funny, it makes you feel good, um, at times, you know, it also gives you the feels. It's just such a unique, um, interesting story to tell, told in such an endearing way. Uh, we both really, really loved it. If you've already watched the show, then you're going to understand what I say when I say that Roy Kent is my spirit animal. And if you haven't watched the show, you should definitely go ahead and watch it so that you know who Roy Kent is. So we watched that lesso and after that I went on to watch another very popular uh, show on that platform, which is The Morning Show. I had heard super uh, much about The Morning Show. It stars Jennifer Aniston, Reese Witherspoon and... Why am I blanking out? Steve Carell. Jeez. It was getting a lot of buzz and I think it received some Golden Globe nominations, so I thought, okay, you know what, it seems like a really good show, so I would like to give it a go. And I have one episode left, only the last episode from season one, and I don't really know how I feel about this show. It's not a bad show, by no means it's a bad show, but is it also a good one? Is it also a great one? I don't know, I don't know. I have several issues with the show, uh, the first one being, let's talk about the cast. So, first of all, I don't mind Jennifer Aniston, but let's be honest, Jennifer Aniston only knows how to do one thing, and that is pretty much being Rachel. I really enjoyed her in Horrible Bosses. I thought she was, you know, at her best comedic talent in Horrible Bosses. But for the most part, and there was one other movie where I thought she was really good. It's like a small indie movie. I don't recall how it's called. I might look it up on IMDb and put the title somewhere here. That was a movie she was really good at. But for the rest, I've never really thought that Jennifer Aniston is an actress who has a lot of range when it comes to acting. And The Morning Show, unfortunately, didn't convince me of the opposite. I still don't think that she's a super talented actress. She is different than uh, Rachel in this show, so at least she got she's got that going for her. But to be honest with you, I I also find that at times she's like super overacting, and it's just mm, a bit cringy to watch. Reese Witherspoon, on the other hand, yeah, she uh, is she has a lot of range, and we've already seen that she can do comedy. She can be, you know that blonde chick from Legally Blonde, and she can also do extremely dramatic roles. Um, so I think that Reese definitely has a range, and she's very believable in her character on the morning show, and she's not, you know, anything else that I've seen before. She's the character from the morning show. So I think in terms of, like, actor talent, Reese is the one that nails it the best out of the three. Steve Carell is a very likable guy and in this particular show he plays a bit of an ambiguous character and I'm going to back, go back to that ambiguity in a little bit um, as one of the main themes of the show. But I think he he does a good job portraying his character but again is he really anything else than what Steve, Steve Carell usually is? I don't know. Now when we talk about this show as a whole one of the things that bothers me the most about it, I don't like 
movies or shows where um, you're kind of annoyed by all the characters, you don't sympathize with any of them, you don't like any of them, you don't root for any of them, and this is one of those TV shows where I feel like there's not a single character here that doesn't irritate me. Like, the character of uh, Jennifer Aniston irritates me immensely, and I'm not sure whether that was the idea. A lot of the times I think maybe that was the idea, you know, maybe it's on purpose that she's so irritating, but I find her character to be very, like, predictable, one-dimensional, and such a cliché. And the same for Reese Witherspoon's character, she's also a bit of a cliché to me, like, all of the characters are such clichés. And then the part that confuses me the most is exactly what this, the punchline of this uh, TV show is. Like, I don't understand whether they're, like, trying to be morally ambiguous or whether they're telling the story in such a way that you are left wondering exactly what kind of a stand they're trying to take and if they're trying to take a stand and they're doing it in a very bizarre way. The thing is I don't want to give away too much from the show in case you haven't watched it yet but um, the first season focuses a lot on you know the aftermath of the Me Too movement and you know that's fine it's a it's a interesting topic to discuss especially one that is very relevant at the moment by the way before i proceed i'm just going to quickly throw on some of my pixie epoxy from ferini but they are telling the story in such a <laughs> ambiguous way that you are really left wondering what exactly are they trying to tell you are they trying to tell you that uh, some people have pushed the me too movement a notch too far to an extent where you can't take anyone seriously anymore or are they really being serious posing these specific stories as a serious representation of the Me Too movement because if they are then I'm sorry but um, it, it I sincerely hope that's not what they're trying to do by the way now I'm going to take Citrine Envy and just apply that um, using my fingers I've figured out that that's the best way to use this shade and I'm just going to take it here into the outer corner of the eye a little bit over the brown as well because again I don't want to spoil too much of the story but the specific examples that they have chosen to me ring more like you know women who had consensual sexual interactions with a um, more powerful figure at work and then they had regrets about it and now they are playing the victim sorry but that's exactly how the stories that are presented on this specific tv show ring to me and i sincerely hope that that's not what the uh, me too movement is supposed to be about based on this specific tv show it would seem as if the biggest lesson from the me too movement is that people apparently don't know how to say no and that if they don't want a sexual interaction with someone at work, they are allowed to say no and walk out the door. I really hope I didn't give away too much of the show. But I'm curious if some of you have already watched it. By the way, and I'm going to take Corrupt Copper and I'm going to apply it here in the inner portion of the lid, overlapping just the tiniest bit with Citrine Envy. We're going to do a little bit of uh, fun layering there in a little bit as well. So yeah, these are the shows that I've been watching. The Morning Show has a second season, which from what I understand focuses on the COVID pandemic, and I don't think I will be watching that. I was already, you know, I committed to watching season one because I started watching it and I was like, okay, I just want to see where they're going to take this story. But after having almost completed season one, like I said, I've only one episode left to watch, I am felt a little bit, you know, disappointed and not really interested to continue watching the stories of these characters. Very quickly, before we proceed to the fun layering, I'm just going to take the little champagne shade here and apply that in my inner corners, not to anyone's surprise. I could apply the gold and I think it might look really fun as well, but I just don't want it to be too, too colorful. So I'm just popping a little bit of this shade here in the inner corners, although I have to tell you this shade is now looking extremely pink next to the rest of the shade, so I might layer the tiniest bit of the gold over top of that. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take the tiniest bit of the gold shade from Celestial Odyssey and just layer the tiniest bit over that pinky champagne. If you have the Celestial Odyssey palette, you can easily just, you know, do a little bit of blend between the two shades uh, and it would look really beautiful as it is. But of course this is a pet pairing, so we're going to do some fun layering and you might have already guessed it from the thumbnail, but uh, since we're using the Sublime palette, I think the most logical choice to go for here is 
this gorgeous shade here. This is one of Pat's VR shades. It's the shade VR Nectar, which happens to be in my top three of favorite Pat shades. So I'm going to take this gorgeous shade, which is like a lime green gold shifting with a little bit of like peachy pink sparkles to it. And I'm going to apply it here over top of both the orange and the pink, just at the border between the two shades for a little bit of fun layering and also to marry those two shades better together. Oh, pretty. I've read that critics have not been very kind to the show and I can see why. I can see why the show is trying to come off as like very serious and discussing like very woke topics but unfortunately it's not doing it in a very woke way. It's mostly doing it in like that fake woke way, um, just making it super cringy and super irritating. I think this looks really pretty. I'm too lazy to open the Celestial Odyssey again, so on my lower lash line I'm just going to take the deep brown shade from my Sublime palette. You could just apply the brown from the Celestial Odyssey again, the combination of the two browns, but I can't be bothered. And since this is a deep brown, it will do the job just fine. So this is the final look and I really felt like it would not be complete without a lipstick that has a lot of orange and brown in it and I figured Cinnabar from Lisa Eldridge is probably going to be the perfect lipstick for that and I feel like it completes the look to perfection. I'm really happy with the final look, I think it's very vibrant, it's really fun and I think VR Nectar really added something to the two shades uh, underneath it. I hope you enjoyed the look and it translated well on camera. Um, hopefully my ramblings on these two TV shows were also enjoyable to you. If you've watched both of these shows or one of these shows, let me know what you thought about them. I think the topic that is being discussed by the morning show is a little bit too complex and too loaded to just be able to discuss it in 20 minutes during a, you know, makeup application video. But if you have any thoughts on it, I would be more than happy to discuss it in the comments with you. If there are any other shows on Apple TV that you would recommend, uh, let me know. I think next on my list would be The Servant because it's a TV series by M. Night Shyamalan. And Shyamalan is a little bit of a hit and miss for me. I either really love his stuff or I really, really hate them. So I'm very curious which category The Servant will fall into. So I might give it a go when I'm finished with season one of The Morning Show, which will be very, very soon. And after that, I'm going to jump back into Netflix because there's a bunch of things there that I haven't seen yet. Anyway, thank you so much for uh, joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this look. Also, let me know what you thought about the look. And we shall see each other again very, very soon. Kind of jealous of Lisa right now. Okay, bye!